Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so today I've got an unboxing of four very beautiful knives by Miyabi. And so let me just go through them and tell you what they are. Uh, before I do that though, thank you to Cutlery and More for sending these here. These are review samples sent by them. And uh, just so we are clear, you are not getting them back. No matter how much you threaten me with, no, <laughs> with not sending me any products, uh, these are beautiful knives and I would hate to let them go after I open them today. And uh, yeah, so that's all. I just have to make that disclaimer out there. So these are one of the knives that have been really heavily requested on my channel for reviews. And so luckily I actually had a chance to get them all here. And so I am just so excited to actually have these uh, just opened and checked out. And you know, a lot of folks have been kind of commenting on my channel that it's becoming an unboxing channel. And <laughs> I don't mean for it to become an unboxing channel, but some of these knives that I get here are just so beautiful and they really deserve an unboxing and a proper look before I do a review on them. And so instead of doing an unboxing video per knife, I'm gonna kind of group brands together or group sets together and do it that way. That way I get less less videos out there, but you guys can see more of a bird's eye view that will give you kind of a better lineup of what, the, or a better view of what the brand's lineups are. All right, so let's go over the lineup of today's knives. We have the Miyabi 600D, which is the Fusion Morimoto edition. Now this one here is the Mizu, uh, eight inch chef knife as well. This one here is the 6000. Uh, it's also known as the Artisan lineup that you guys will mostly see. Uh, the 6000, I think, is an internal SKU system, but if you go online to any websites, it's the Artisan edition. And this here is the 5000, which is the Birchwood, uh, the Karelian Birchwood, which I am very excited to actually use in my kitchen. All right, so let's set a couple of these aside. We'll go through one by one. I'll look through the features, the way the knife feels in my hand, and uh, then I'll have a full review with sharpening videos uh, for these knives in the coming weeks. All right. Isn't that exciting, guys? <laughs> you know, I keep telling people, ask for knives that you guys really want to see. Uh, for, but for some reason, every time you guys ask for a brand that either I don't have or I've been asking for, uh, they, somebody comes on board and hands them to me, which is really cool. Uh, really, really cool. <laughs> okay, so here we are. So we've got a tip guard here. Ah, this feels really good. Really nice. We'll set this aside. This knife feels really good in my hands right now. So let's just go over some of the things that I look for in a good knife. And so the first thing I look for is fit and finish. I feel the spine. I feel the ferrule. Okay, I play with the handle a little bit, see where the edges are, the sharp edges are. Uh, this knife here, the spine feels really nice. It's got a really good satin finish, uh, really good satin polish. And the ferrule, not very sharp. It's slightly angular, but definitely not a problem, uh, at least not in my opinion. Uh, the choil here is also very well polished with a rounded choil, rounded neck here, which actually really, uh, what, what this does is actually brings your hand much more far forward uh, or further forward on your pinch grip. So it's something that you have to adjust for. It's something that uh, a lot of folks may not be used to if you're used to using Western knives, but they actually are pretty nice when you have uh, used them for a little while. To give you a very uh, very interesting grip, you actually get a little further ahead, like I said, but uh, I would say a quarter of an inch further than your typical pinch grip. Uh, this here uses a flower or I believe a rose Damascus finish, which is very, very pretty. And the core steel is using a VG10, heat treated to about a 60 on the Rockwell scale. So a very respectable number, uh, like I said, anything 60 or above, you're getting into the hard territory, and 62 and above, you're getting into the very hard territory. So this is just right for most folks. Uh, I don't believe you'll have any chipping issues for those who are worried about chipping with Japanese knives. I really like the profile of this knife. If you look here, it's got a very beautiful, consistent uh, taper from the heel to the tip. Okay, so you don't have this massive belly, which sometimes uh, even Japanese knives are actually starting to make that or input that into their knives. I really like slice of profiles. Uh, I do like rocking on my knives, don't get me wrong, but I really do enjoy a profile of a Gyoto that is slightly more straighter than rounded and uh, just a very beautiful profile. Coming down to the handle, it feels really good. This is a polymer handle or some people will call it a palm handle. So the materials of these handles are actually really cool because they are waterproof, stain proof, and shrink proof, which sometimes wood handles tend to have. 
uh, or tend to uh, suffer with. But the really cool thing about this knife here is the uh, attention to detail. I mean, to the red decals of the Morimoto edition is actually really cool. And looking at these knives over here, I'll go through them, but the attention to detail on the Miyabis are something that you really cannot deny. And yeah, it's just very, very pretty here. Um, I like the stop at the end, even though this is a very thin knife, thin handle, it's really great for a person with small hands, but it doesn't, I don't feel like the knife will actually slip from my hand because of this little stop back here, uh, this, this butt or this end. So very, very nice inclusion of that shape there. Uh, so you also have a triple rivet design, which is actually nice. It's a full tang knife. If we look very closely here, it's actually really nice. It's a consistent tang uh, all the way from the front to the back. So actually the fact that they're showing you the tang is actually a really cool design cue. So you can see here the polishing is really, really nice on the choil. Yeah, and the knife feels really nimble. I actually really enjoy the way this thing feels. And being that it's a palm handle or a polymer handle, you see that the weight is slightly more biased towards the handle, which is actually not a big problem at all. All right, so that is the Miyabi Fusion Morimoto. Let's have a look at the other knives here. All right, so we have the Mizu here. Uh, a few of my subscribers have told me that they have the Mizu and they love it. And uh, so I'm actually very curious to see how this knife performs. Now, the Morimoto edition is a, is a VG10 core steel and these next three knives, I believe, are all SG2s. So the SG2s are a, a new super steel. It's a powder steel, very, very hard. You normally see SG2s uh, with a heat treatment of about 63 and above. Uh, you will see them in 62s every once in a while. Uh, this, let me leave that on there. But normally SG, SG2s uh, you'll find with a heat treatment of 63. And I believe all of these here have a heat treatment of 63. Oh, look at this knife. That is really nice. And again, going through the fit and finish, just feeling the corners, the edges, the spine, the choil. All right, so on the spine, you have a satin finish, uh, satin polish. And this is a three layered finish on the exterior. And it's very cool. It actually has a, it feels like it's been uh, like sandblasted or something like that. Because you have a very high sheen and polish on the top half of the knife. In the lower half, right before you get to the blade, you have this matte finish, which is actually really cool. It gives it a very, uh, a lot of depth because you have the sumichi finish, the hammered finish, and then you come down a little lower to this cloud, this fog. So it gives the knife a very interesting look when I'm standing here looking at it. And you have the, I believe you know, some people call this oil finish on the cutting edge. Uh, so very, very nice looking knife. These knives are all sharpened between eight and 12 degrees at the cutting edge, which is absolutely insane. And you can definitely feel them. And these knives are razor, razor sharp. I mean, on a scale of one to 10, these are a 10. I don't think you can get them any sharper. Uh, you might, I mean, I'm sure you can get them sharper, but from a practical standpoint, they are, I mean, just listen to that, that pitch. I mean, it, it rings on the edge. <laughs> uh, very beautiful knife. So on the logo, we looking, uh, we're looking at a, I believe a laser embossed logo on the left hand side, and uh, looks like a, a stamped, a heat stamped logo on the right hand side. Uh, I don't think that'll be an issue in terms of washing it off at all. The choil is very nice. It's got a nice little divot here, and so it gives you a nice place for your middle finger to actually rest when you're sharpening, uh, and in your pinch grip. So very, very nice uh, inclusion of detail there. And the polish, this mirror polish is actually very, very pretty. Uh, and it's done right. So the, the mirror polish here is coupled with this, this haze. And so it doesn't, it doesn't look cheap of a finish. Sometimes when I see knives that are completely all mirror finish, sometimes I just have a, a little bit of a, a, of a reserve when I see those things. But the inclusion of the Sumichi finish with the mirror polish gives it just such uh, depth. And the profile is a little different from the Fusion. This has a more of a rocker profile. It's got a slightly more pronounced belly, although very, very minor. So this here will be uh, really suited for someone who wants a Japanese knife uh, that's very, very hard, but also coming from a, a more Western rocking profile. 
So I think this is going to be a great knife. Coming down to the handle, we see that the stainless steel ferrule is right there. And also the red, you know, a lot of knives that I get with a, uh, going from a steel to the wood handle, um, I don't remember any of my other knives here having this red decal on both ends of the handle. And like I said, this is a knife with or brand that has a very high attention to detail. Uh, also, it's coming down to the rivet in the center. This mosaic rivet is very, very pretty. You have, if you look very closely here, we can see a square and there's five copper rods in the center and there's uh, looks like eight copper rods on the exterior. So very, very nice uh, inclusion of this uh, rivet here. I will try to get a closer shot so you guys can actually see this decal. Very beautiful. And coming down to the butt of the knife, it's steel, so very nice. The weight of the knife is, or the balance of the knife, is slightly more towards the rear as well because of the steel uh, steel end cap here. Uh, but the handle, I believe there's a micarta linen handle, so very nice in terms of being able to resist water, resist staining and shrinkage. And I really like micarta. Micarta, even though they tend to be a little bit heavy compared to their wooden counterparts, um, they retain their feel really nice. In terms of the taper of the handle, so this is also, this is a D handle, but very, very minor in terms of how aggressive that D is. Sometimes when you hold a D handle, the edge on the right hand side, if it's a right hand D handle, is very, very sharp. This is extremely well rounded, so very ovalized in terms of the way the handle feels. So it almost feels like a, a oval handle, but I can definitely feel that there is a slight higher mound or higher angle on the right hand side, which makes it a D handle. So very interesting that uh, the level of detail in this handle is very, very nice. You don't have a very aggressive taper from the end of the handle to the tip of the handle or to the front of the handle. So it's very, very comfortable. And so it's very stable. And uh, yeah, the, the finish of the handle is also very nice. It's not overly glossy, even though this is a, well, this is a, I would call this a satin finish on the handle. And so I don't feel the micarta at all. Okay, so I just definitely feel a good layer of resin, but it doesn't feel overly plastic or cheap. It just feels really, really nice. And I don't feel like my hand will slip that much. Uh, even if, it, if it's a little greasy with some chicken grease or chicken skin, I don't think that it will cause a big issue, at least not with this uh, particular satin finish right here. A very high glossy finish, you will have some slipping issues, but not this particular finish. All right, so... Yeah, very beautiful looking knife. I, I like it. It feels very nimble, again, uh, something I always look, look for in a Japanese knife. But it feels really nice, and that's the, uh, that's the important thing here. All right, so we're moving up the ladder here in terms of the, uh, maybe not the quality, but the line of knives. So this here is the Artisan line. And I'm excited because that handle looks very, very interesting. All right, so here is the Artisan. Uh, this knife here has been a heavily requested knife on my on my channel, uh, mainly because it is a newer knife and it is, oh man, it feels really, really nice. Now, this is really interesting because it, when you look at this knife on photos and when you see it in person, even before you take it out of the box, the, I'm gonna start with the handle just because I'm on the handle right now, but it's a D, shaped like handle with a it's really hard to explain so it's definitely ovalized okay so it's got a very pronounced center of the handle sometimes when you have a knife a handle that is very pronounced in the center and it tapers on both ends it feels very uncomfortable because you feel like you're holding like a golf ball in the center of your hands uh, this one here does not feel that way at all i mean there is a a belly uh, a pronounced belly but it has also built into the the right side of the knife a slight D-shaped handle, which is, I never thought I would see this on a knife. And uh, so when I saw photos of this knife, I thought this probably is not gonna be very comfortable for me because it just looks like an ovalized handle. But no, this is ovalized, it's shaped and tapered in a very interesting way that it's a D-handle coupled with an ovalized handle. If, does that make any sense at all? Uh, probably not. You just have to hold this knife for yourself. Uh, it has also a satin finish. The wood is also very interesting. This is a Coco Bolo Rosewood Packerwood. Okay, so it's a very nice feeling handle. And the, 
the color of this thing is just very, very stunning. Uh, I love rosewood, uh, and especially when you have rosewood coupled with black resin, it gives it just a very deep depth to the handle, which is uh, very, very nice. And uh, Now, it's that uh, attention to the level of detail of this knife that really sets it apart from a lot of other brands. And coming up to the spine here, we have a very nice rounded spine. And also, looking at these knives, I noticed that they're actually very, very thin. Uh, so I don't think that'll be an issue at all, but definitely thin. They're at the max. You're looking at 1.8 to maybe 2 millimeters uh, at the absolute max. So definitely are going to be really good slicing uh, performers on the cutting board and through your foods and your fruits and or fruit and vegetables. Uh, coming down to the choil, very nice rounded polish on the choil. And as I'm coming this way, you, you can definitely tell that the you know the polish on the choil actually improves ever so slightly on the artisan line. And again, when I'm talking about detail, this is what I mean. You look here on where the ferrule meets the handle, you see a red and gold decal. Uh, normally you see red on a lot of knives if they do include a color. Sometimes you see red, white, um, or whatever else. But you see two colors here, two bands of color on the top and the bottom of the handle. Again, it's just detail. It's just these little minute details that really change the way you perceive a knife. And also the mosaic hand, uh, the mosaic rivet on the handle is the same as the Mizu, uh, that beautiful, very beautiful mosaic pattern here. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the handle just feels so different, uh, something I did not expect at all. So going back to the steel, you're looking at an SG2 core steel, which is, again, heat treated to about a 62 to 63 on the Rockwell scale. You have the same hazy finish, sandblast finish here. Um, I don't think it's, hand, it's sandblasted. I'm just calling it a sandblast because that's the only thing I can relate to in terms of how it looks. Uh, very beautiful hazy finish with a high gloss sheen on the top half of the knife. And the same uh, laser embossed logo on the left side, and it looks like a heat stamp logo on the right hand side. But yeah, I mean this. I mean this is a really beautiful knife. I mean I can really see that this is appropriately named the artisan line because it really is a piece of artwork. Uh, everything from the blade, even though you have the same blade of the Mizu, um, but the handle is really something special, and. This is something that I'm seeing uh, that I really appreciate brands, or at least, yeah, just brands in general, especially Japanese brands are starting to integrate, is they're keeping the, the sharpness and the blade technology of a Japanese knife, but they're integrating Western handles because Western handles are more comfortable uh, as a whole. And so, but this still feels like it's a Japanese handle because it's a, you know, it's more of a D-shaped handle with a Western influence in terms of how it's shaped. I mean, it's just a very interesting, handle and I know that I'm kind of over praising the handle right now but I really feel like it's a very special handle uh, especially for you know me I've got small hands so for me to find a knife that has a handle that looks relatively large but fits my hands so nicely uh, that's actually really hard and actually quite rare all right so let's uh, put this guy down and go over to the 5000 now uh, this knife here is a knife that I have always been eyeing. Uh, it's a knife that I have <laughs> appreciated for a very long time and was never really able to afford it because well, the price tag, it's, it's well over $200. But I have been fortunate enough to receive this as a sample, as a review sample, and that is really nice. I know this sounds like I'm overplaying these things, uh, but I am, uh, I, 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 I am so appreciative of of all the product that I get, you know, and I really cannot just uh, look at a knife and say, "Oh, that's just a free sample. Don't worry about it." But no, I I take my time and appreciate what I've been given because this channel here uh, was not something that I was striving for, and so when I receive product that is high quality and just beautifully crafted, I I do have to take a moment and remind myself that not everyone gets to enjoy these things, and so don't take these things for granted. Uh, you know, it's it's very easy for uh, for me at the, even at this point to you know, like I said, I have about a hundred knives here, and it's very easy to forget that um, these were put together by people, and they were uh, you know people put their lives into making knives and making them beautiful so that people like me can enjoy them. And so I just want to take a moment and just uh, 
um, yeah, and just appre and acknowledge that. And I really want to just not be one of those people that um, that just take everything for granted, right? And it's very easy to do that in, in life. Um, but this box is very beautiful. It's very nice. I mean, it's got this beautiful satin. Um, it's like a cloth, but I don't think it's cloth. It feels like cloth, like a really high silk cloth. But I think it's just, a, it's actually the finish of the paper that they put on top, on top of the paper. But really nice. <laughs> it's a beautiful box. It's also magnetized. So I imagine anyone who owns this knife, uh, you might be inclined to leave this box in your kitchen drawer and uh, open it whenever you want this knife and put it back into its case. Very nice. Very nice box. So we have our manual. Oh, and I opened this box once. I didn't take the knife out. I just looked at it. It's a stunning, stunning knife. So I'm going to take it off today. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, like I said, I have to take a moment sometimes and just stop and appreciate what I have, uh, what I've been given. But man, this is so nice. Wow. Okay. So let's talk now. All right. So fit and finish. I, I don't need to tell you this, but it is spotless. This thing is perfectly put together. I mean, the spine, it's so, so nicely polished. It's the, it's a satin finish and uh, it's nicely rounded on both sides, the choil and the spine. Uh, this Damascus finish is something that I have not had on my knives at all. And I actually need to look this up really quickly here. This is a very different Damascus finish than anything I've actually owned. And I think this will tell me what it is. I hope it will tell me what it is. Mm, it does not. So we will, I will have to research that. But man, is that beautiful. Oh. All right, so this again is using the SG2 and this is heat treated to a 63 on the Rockwell scale. Uh, and the process that they use is called Creodor. I've never heard of that process before. And it's, I mean, this is just a fantastic knife. I can stand here forever <laughs> and just drool Again, uh, coming down to the handle, we are looking at a D-shaped handle, but also very different. It is a D-shaped handle, but very similar to the Mizu and also to the Artisan. It's slightly shaped differently than a typical D-shaped handle. So let me hold it with my left hand. Uh, even with my left hand, it feels very, very comfortable. But I can tell that this is a right-handed D-shape because the D, the, the arc of the D is on the right-hand side and definitely is slightly more pronounced. And it's actually not in, the, it's not in the middle of the knife. It's actually slightly higher up, which is a very smart move because when you're holding a knife, either in a pinch grip or even in a non pinch grip, your knuckle, your first knuckle is slightly higher up. And so having that D, that arch of the D higher up, it makes this D shaped handle extremely comfortable, which I have never held in any of my knives before. I've never felt that before. And so this actually feels very, very different from a typical D handle. And uh, the Carillion Birchwood is beautiful. I mean, it's so, so beautiful. What they've done differently here is instead of having a finish, a satin finish that goes uh, completely around and engulfs the entire piece of wood and, uh, and kind of just leaves you with feeling nothing but the finish, you actually can feel the, the uh, characteristics of the wood. And that's something that's very, very nice here you really feel like this is a hand-pieced or handcrafted piece of uh, a tool because the wood is, it's all there. You can feel the wood, you can, you can touch it. Uh, and it is, it's like it's alive in your hand. And then having a, a finish that is just enough to keep the wood from splintering, from absorbing too much water, uh, it is a very, very special handle. And seeing it in videos, it's very, very different. And seeing it in photos and seeing it in behind a counter, it's nothing like holding this knife. And that is something that is really, really special about the handle and just the knife in general. 
And so you have the stainless steel end cap with a red decal, uh, a red ring around the top and bottom of the handle. And the handle again has a very minor taper from the bottom tip or bottom of the heel to the tip. So very, very, very minor. We're looking at maybe a, I would say two or, th two or three millimeters between in terms of thickness, uh, overall circumference between the bottom cap and the uh, where the ferro meets the handle. So very minor, very minor taper here. But yeah, <laughs> I know I can stand here and just talk about a knife forever and just give you all the little intricate details that I see here. But very beautiful knife. And I am so, uh, so thankful that Cutlery Amore has come on board as a partner. So thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, thank you, uh, the folks at Cutlery Amore for supporting my channel because uh, without you, obviously these knives would not be here and I would not be holding and experiencing this, uh, these four beautiful pieces of art. And uh, so I'm gonna put this down. Um, I will get a full review session of these knives soon. Uh, I have a number of knives that I'm using and I'm rotating my knives as fast as I can uh, on a week to week basis so that I can give you guys a proper review on them. Um, I will also integrate these into a sharpening series because a lot of folks are probably curious how you sharpen a knife with a 60 heat treatment versus a knife with a 63 heat treatment. And so I will get them into the series and I will answer all the questions you guys have about these knives. Um, they are all so beautiful. They're all very different. They are different in so many ways, but so similar that they are just so well crafted and so well put together. Um, every one of them, the, uh, the attention to the level of detail is um, unmatched and uh, they are just fantastic knives. I'm so proud to have them here. I'm so thankful to have them here. So thank you again to all of my subscribers. Uh, thank you to Cutlery and More for being a friend of my channel. And so guys, uh, I am extremely excited to use these knives. I will do my best to give you guys a proper in-depth review of all of them, um, either side by side, individually, or as a group. So just let me know in the comments what you guys actually wanna see. Uh, and you guys know the other knives I have in my studio. So if you guys wanna see these knives compared to other knives in terms of what I think about them, uh, again, leave in the comments, uh, I read all of them. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here and I will catch you guys in the next video.